Okay, welcome to the Handicappers. Today we're talking tight ends in your fantasy draft. And we're going to make these short and sweet because we know you want to get ready for your draft. I'm going to give you what most would call a love-hate list, a, a shove them or, or love them or whatever the hell you want to call this. These are my do and don'ts. Do draft these guys, don't draft these guys. And I'm not saying the players aren't any good. What I'm saying is they're going way too damn early for you to be drafting them, and there's no point in it. So let's go ahead and dive into it. The first one on the list, this is one that I've gotten a lot of questions about, is Travis Kelsey. Do you draft Travis Kelsey? His output is so much greater than anybody else's. He averaged over 100 more points a season over any other tight end during this big stint in his career. The problem that you have with Travis Kelsey is he's averaging being picked 10th to 11th, about a 10.9 overall. Is it worth not having an elite wide receiver, not having an elite running back at that spot and going with Travis Kelsey because you know you're going to dominate that particular position. I personally do not believe that that is the, the way to go. I do not draft Travis Kelsey. I let somebody else have him, someone who just cannot look past the very obvious allure of Kelsey and the points that he's going to bring you in. And you look at Darren Waller, he's going to go 17 slots lower. George Kittle, 20 slots lower. These are two guys who have proven that they are elite and the offense runs through them, and that's what you want out of a tight end. TJ Hawkinson is going 54th, 44 slots lower. Kyle Pitts is a wild card because he is a rookie, and we all know you just can't depend on what a rookie is going to do. But more importantly, you have to look at the fact of where he's going and where he goes in those picks. If you do take pits and he is a bust, you're taking a very big risk on what your team is going to look like. It's not the fact that he's going to be on your team. It's what you're going to miss out on the rest of it. So away we go with our list of do's and don'ts. Do not in any circumstance draft Rob Gronkowski. The Gronk is a great tight end all time. The Gronk will be ready to roll in January when it's time to play. The Gronk is not going to be heavily involved in Tampa Bay's offense. You might see them go in there and, and put plays in here and there from week to week that, you're, that you get excited about. He is going way too high, 74th overall. He's going in front of Dallas Goder, Logan Thomas, Robert Tunyon. Noah Fant, Gasecki. The why are you, why is he going over all these guys? Tyler Higby. Why is he going over all these guys? It's because of one reason and one reason only. He's got a brand that everybody loves. They love the Gronk. Nothing wrong with going out and buying his jersey, but you don't want him on your fantasy championship team because your fantasy team will not be a championship team. Guys, the other guys that I just do not like, they're going way too high. Hunter Henry at the 110 pick overall. That's way too high. Noah Fant, it is a big question mark. He was on my do list, and now he's got a lower leg injury. That concerns me. Keep that monitored going forward with him. A couple other guys on my don't list. I don't like Evan Ingram. No matter what they sell us every single year, Evan Ingram is always a bust. And even going at the 131st pick overall. So if you're in a 10 man league, you're talking about 13 around the 13th round. There are other tight ends that I like much better, unless you're in a ridiculously deep league. Another guy that I do not like under any circumstance, and someone's going to go out there and they're going to, and they're going to take it a risk on him, is the Dallas Godare. I know a lot of people are big on him. Dallas Godare is 83rd right now on the ADP. Logan Thomas is sitting right there with him. We'll get to him in a second. 
right below him is Robert Tunyon, Noah Fant, Gasecki, guys whose these offenses are going to roll through them. You are banking on a very unproven quarterback in Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia to bring you to the finish line to get the ball to go there. And remember something, they still have Zach Ertz. And Zach Ertz has looked pretty good in the preseason. He has, it's been very well documented about how much time he's put in. Godair is going to be affected by that. He's absolutely going to be affected by that. And so I cannot in any good consciousness tell you to draft someone who is going to be splitting time on the tight end position. You just absolutely cannot do it. It doesn't make any sense. It would be dumb for me to even advise that at this point. There, there is also a uh, an, another outlying thing that you got to keep an eye on in New England. You've got two tight ends there. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous to have two tight ends in New England going in the top 15. John U. Smith is sitting. His ADP is usually somewhere around uh, the 145 range. And then you have his counterpart, Hunter Henry, in the 110 range. These are two guys that are going to split time, and you're going to have duds. You're going to have weeks where you get nothing. Stay away from these guys because let someone else grab them. And in that same area, you can grab the Noah Fane. You can grab the Gasecki. You can get Tyler Higby, who should be ready to be on his own with Los Angeles with a much better quarterback. So those are your, are your don'ts. Your do's, the guys that I do like, the guys that I am willing to take a risk on. I'll take a George Kittle. George Kittle, that offense will run through him. He's averaging around number 30 ADP. I don't hate the George Kittle pick. If you're sitting there in a 10-man draft and you get him at the number 30 pick somewhere in that area, I would say I, I'd be more likely to put George Kittle closer to 35 to 37. If he falls that far, then I'm on it. I'm not going to jump out there and grab him in the, in, in the early to mid-20s. I'll let someone else have him. Darren Waller, I believe in most drafts are just going to go a little too high because whenever Kelsey goes, they follow him, don't they? They're, there's always someone goes, oh, I got to get the tight end. Got to get him now. So you got you to stay out of that mindset. Don't let somebody else's strategy affect your strategy. Go in with your mindset. This is what I'm going to do. I have been playing fantasy football and fantasy baseball, for that matter, for over 30 years now. I started as a young kid and I did this my very first draft and I still do it to this day. And a lot of people don't do this. I have a written on written piece of paper. Usually it's, it's some kind of a notebook that is just my fantasy football rosters. And I will write down each position in each draft. Cause I'm in a ton of drafts and I will make sure that I physically know by looking at that, and it's going to be right by me while I'm drafting where I'm at in the draft. Do I need a tight end? Should I need a tight end? I'm going to have some guys jotted down on guys that I want to get. I'm going to have guys that I don't want to get. And those are the guys that if I'm in an auction league, I'm putting them up first. Usually guys that I think are going way too high. Those are the guys that I'm going to throw out there because I want you to spend your money in a typical draft scenario. I'm going to let those guys go because unless something ridiculous happens, I don't want the scrub pick. I don't want the guy that is coming off of a run, meaning if someone runs out and grabs Kelsey and then the next guy grabs Waller and the next guy grabs Kittle, don't panic and feel like you got to go get Pitts or Andrews. Sit back and get the next best wide receiver or running back. Let them run through that. It'll come back around to you. In a lot of weeks, there won't be a much, much of a difference between what Andrews is doing and what Hawkinson or Logan Thomas or even down to Fanta Conseki are doing. People worry about the big picture on the points. I worry about the week to week. The other thing you want to pay attention to is when you're going after your tight end, 
I typically, and this is why I don't end up with the Travis Kelsey's. I typically like to fill out my running backs and receivers and maybe even my flex before I ever go to my tight end. Now that is because if someone's going or if some ones are going on runs on tight ends, I just let them have them. Now, if I'm in the middle of a draft and I'm noticing a Kelsey's falling into the third round, that's a little ridiculous. I'll grab them. If I'm noticing a Waller or a Kittle is falling a little further than he should, I'm going to grab him. But if he's going and, and I have a drop dead number, I'll, I'll have it jotted down depending on each league, depending on the scoring system. I'll have a number that tells you off the jump, I want him. If he's, if he's uh, below this number or better, I don't want him if I have to jump above, in other words, the rounds. I don't want to have to go grab Kelsey in the first round. But if I've got a late pick, and I'm talking about a late pick in the second round in a 10-man in a league, and Kelsey's sitting there, and I got the last pick, why not? Why not grab him? Then you've got an advantage. But I'm not going to sit there if I've got the number 10 pick overall in a 10-man league and I have and I go running back first or wide receiver or whoever's best available, my next pick is not going to be Travis Kelsey. It just doesn't make sense. So the guys that I say do pick, I like Kyle Pitts, but he's going a little too high. If you have to get him at the 42 ADP, I say punt that. If you can get him in, in the 50s and 60s, preferably closer to 70, then by all means. But he's a little too high. Keep keep an eye on, 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 on where it is and also keep your league in, in mind. Mark Andrews, he's steady Eddie. He's sitting there at the 52 ADP. That's about right. I want to get him a little farther back. I'm looking for 55 to 60, but I don't mind spending 52. But if I have to grab him in the fourth round, I, that's a reach. That's a huge reach. TJ Hawkinson, I believe, is going to have a very similar season. That offense is going to run through him. Who do they have on the, on the wide receiving core that's left? So TJ Hawkinson, I believe, would actually be above Andrews in the overall ranking system because you can get him later in the draft. A guy that I do like, Logan Thomas. Coming at the 84 ADP, if you can get him in that range, you're doing well. Robert Tunyon, his quarterback is back. He's going to be very reliable. He's averaging coming in on the ninth round, late in the ninth round. That is a very favorable ADP. And we talked about Fant. You got to monitor his injury situation. All these guys, you're going to have to monitor the injury situation as I'm making these just a, a week or so before the drafts but I can't update them, obviously. Um, Noah Fant is sitting at the 120 ADP. I think that's about right. And if I get him in around the 12th round, I'm okay with that. But if I monitor that leg situation and it looks like he's going to be out for a few games, then he falls way back. He falls down into the 14th, 15th round for me. A guy, another guy that I'm willing to take a bet on, Cole Komet. If he, when he does get his quarterback, and that's why the 146 might be a tad high, but I think the long-term Cole Komet could be a, a steal. Cole Komet is a physical freak. When you get Andy Dalton out of that tight end position, out of the quarterback position, excuse me, and you get the quarterback of that franchise for the future in Justin Fields, the sky is the limit for Cole Komet. Irv Smith should do very well, and that's the list. So those are your do's and don'ts for tight ends. We're doing this for all the positions that are relevant. So make sure to catch all the videos here on YouTube, Armchair Quarterbacks YouTube. Make sure to catch us on Sundays, 10 a.m. Eastern, starting September 12th. Stardom, sit them, and 62% against the spread over the last six years. <laughs>